So, the other day, I was talking to a friend of mine about how living the Christian life can be quite the struggle, particularly in overcoming those shortcomings that we have that are always rather consistent. You know, the sins that we try to avoid, that we think we get over, but that we wind up doing anyway. Now, he and I began to kick around this question. Is there any way to have this cycle broken in a Christian's life? And that is what we're going to explore here in this video. Now, my name is Charles, and this is a simple, not shallow video. A video for those who want a deeper faith, not a confusing one. And that is what our name is all about, keeping faith in Christ simple. Well, simple enough that a child like myself can understand it, and yet very not shallow. Okay, that's probably not very good English, but I'm gonna stick with it, very not shallow. Because when the storms of life hit, we want a faith that will not have to run aground. See, we want our faith to be like a good cup of coffee. Simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. See, as my friend and I talked about this, I was reminded right away something Paul says in Romans chapter 7. This is where he tells us that he does what he does not want to do, and what he wants to do, he's not able to do it. Now both my friend and I agreed that this, rather embarrassingly, was an accurate description of our own experiences. And yet, also in this chapter, Paul indicates that Jesus has already saved him from this cycle of helplessness. So, there has to be a way to break this seemingly unbreakable cycle. I mean, after all, Paul also says that we can choose to not let sin reign over us, that sin is not our master, and that we have been set free from it. Have been set free. Let me say that again, have been, past tense, have been set free. John even goes on to say that he writes the whole letter of 1 John with the expressed purpose so that we will not sin. Both of which put me on the path of thinking and investigating. <laughs> I know, I know, I know always a dangerous thing to do. But I wanted an answer. Now, and this is rather important, the Bible makes it quite clear that this is nothing I can do on my own. For the limits of space and, and time restrictions here, I'm only going to refer to two specific passages. The first is Paul's statement that we already looked at in Romans chapter 7, which shows the need for Jesus to break this cycle. And the second passage is Jesus' very own statement in Mark chapter 10, where he says that such things are only possible for God to make happen. So, we are powerless to stop sinning by ourselves. And yet, sin has no power over the Christian. How is this? Well, it is God that makes this happen. The question now becomes, how does he do this? How is this cycle broken? And why does it take so long? While investigating this, I came across something that, well, I would like to offer to you as a suggestion for your consideration. I have found it to be quite the viable solution in my own life. See, John says something very interesting. He says that whoever loves a brother is both full of light and that there is no occasion for him to stumble. There's no occasion for stumbling in him. Now this seems to say that if I love others, I am free from the power of sin, which reminded me right away of something in Matthew, Matthew 22, the, the passage about the two greatest commands ever given, you know, to love God with our entire being and our neighbor as ourself. Well, specifically speaking, the passage that came to mind 
was the one that said that the whole of the law and the prophets are summed up in these two commands, which also brought to mind passages in both Romans and Galatians, both of which tell us why these two fulfill the whole of the law. Simply put, they say that if I am loving, I am fulfilling the whole law because love does no harm to our neighbor. And if I am doing this, I am then not sinning. Now track with me for just a second, please. Next, I stumbled onto something in 1 Corinthians. Here, Paul talks about this love. He says that no matter what he does, religiously speaking, if it is not from love, he ends up being obnoxious sounding, he is nothing, and he gains nothing. See, all his religious effort, if not from love, is worthless. You know, efforts done without God's love is the essence of doing nothing, of meaninglessness. And then he says something that is mind-bogglingly simple. He says, love is patient. It is kind. It rejoices in the truth, and it always protects. It trusts. It hopes. And it perseveres. And he tells us what love is not. He says it's not envious. It's not boastful. It's not proud, rude, self-seeking, easily angered. It is not a record keeper of wrongs done. And it takes no delight in evil. See, I am beginning to see why John can say that there is nothing that can cause a person to stumble if that person is centered in love. Which brings up one of my favorite Bible chapters of all time, John chapter 15, which of course is the chapter about abiding in Christ. Now verses 9 through 17 speak about God's love and remaining, that is abiding in it. Here Jesus says that if we obey his commands, we will be abiding in him and our joy will be complete. He says, and this is my commandment to you, that you love one another, well, even as I have loved you. See, if we have love one for another, we are abiding in Christ and are in his love. We are then full of his light, and there is nothing to cause us to stumble into sin. How simply profound. Now, as I look back over my own life, it is at precisely those times when I was most focused on loving God and becoming centered in Him and His love that my struggles with sin stopped. And it is exactly precisely when I was no longer intently focused, for whatever reason, on this that the struggles resurfaced, that the shortcomings came back. See, now, I, I'm not saying that this is a magic wand that you wave over your head and presto, change oh, no more struggles, no more sin. What is being said is that this takes growth. This takes time. All strong and vital relationships always do. What I am saying is that this, choosing to be centered in love, is a way of life. Abiding in Christ is a daily choice. It is a moment-by-moment -moment choice. It is a choice that involves growth on your part. And as human beings, we tend to grow very slowly. We just do. But we do grow. And the more we grow, the less we will struggle with the same shortcomings. Now, Others may arise, but that is a topic for a different video. So back to our question, how is this done? How is focusing on loving God done? Well, I have recently been studying the Psalms, and I think I found an answer to this question in the very first one. It says, but if the law of the Lord is his delight and 
on his law, he will muse day and night. He will be happy. He will be, well, as a tree planted by channels of water. See, musing on God and his law day and night. That is, to muse on loving God with your entire being and your neighbor as yourself day and night. To delight in loving God and our neighbor is the way of happiness. It is the way of being blessed. It is the way of having this cycle broken. Isn't that interesting? See, the more you do this, muse on God's love and on loving your neighbor, the more God's love will fill your heart and the more you will not be self-seeking. And so, the more this cycle of sin will be gone from your life, removed by God, as each and every day you choose to love Him and allow His love to fill you. Now, make no mistake about this, it is God who removes the sin, not you. It is as His love fills you, engages you, motivates you, drives you, and becomes the lens that helps you stay focused on Him, that it silently removes your tendency to choose to sin, to choose your self-interests over God's. If we do this, then one day we will look back in amazement, realizing that we were not even aware of it, but the unbreakable cycle had been broken. That is simple and very not shallow. Well, what do you think? Please take a second and tell me in that comment section below. Also, in the description box below, I will list all the Bible passages that I referenced in the order that I referenced them. That way, you can check me out. Make sure I'm not making any of it up or standing way, way, way out in left field. Also, if you liked this video, please click that like and the subscribe button, and then make sure to tag that gray notification bell that shows up and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. Also, if you would like, you can now take a podcast version of this video with you wherever you want to go. Simply go to simplenotshallow.com. You can uh, download it there, or you can subscribe to the Simple Not Shallow podcast through the podcast service of your choice, be that iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, whichever you'd like. And that way, you can listen to this podcast while driving your car, walking your dog, taking your morning jog, wherever, whenever, however you'd like to listen. Well, thank you for taking me with you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>